Have you ever had a really strong opinion about something that didn't really matter at all? Well, welcome to that chapter in human evolution. We're about to talk about Homo floresiensis, or more popularly known as the Hobbit. We have a lot to thank J.R.R. Tolkien for. He's inspired almost all of high fantasy after him, but also we have popular references everywhere, and this is one of them. Um, so now we're talking about Homo floresiensis. This was discovered in Flores Island of Indonesia, of course, for which it's named. So here's the cave where it was found, um, and you can see just how tiny and adorable it is. Um, there's its discoverer holding one of the crania. Um, so Homo floresiensis was found on an, on an island, and one thing that's fairly common on islands is island dwarfism. So on islands, you can sometimes find small elephants, um, but you can also find really large lizards. It's kind of weird. Um, so we think it this might be an instance of island dwarfism with humans. Um, because we are seeing a remarkably smaller body size than um, other hominins. But when we look at the brain size, here's Homo floresiensis. It's like really small, like really, really, really small. Um, and especially when we uh, scale body size for what we expect based on, uh, sorry, scale brain size based on the body size, it's actually a lot smaller than we expect. So Homo floresiensis is just weird all around. Um, so let's, let's talk about some of the bones we have. Um, so we have, you know, a lot of different types of bones for these guys. Um, oddly, their hand and wrist bones, they are actually fairly primitive. Um, their femora do appear to be pretty bipedal, but you can see its legs aren't particularly long. And it also has bizarrely long feet. Um, but really the most contentious thing, of course, is the crania because like, why is this thing so small? Um, so here we are comparing a modern Homo sapiens with Homo floresiensis and a microcephalic Homo sapiens. Cause really people are arguing like, okay, is this a real species or is this just a pathological modern human? That is the main debate centering around Homo floresiensis because these guys are fairly recent. Um, I want to say these are about like 18 to 13,000 years ago. Um, so uh, people have been making comparisons here. Microcephaly is the most common um, pathology that people are looking at. Um, overall, especially when we're looking at the rest of the body parts and we're seeing primitive parts in the wrist, um, that does tend to indicate that it's probably a real species and it's not uh, just a pathological modern human because it would be weird to see primitive parts in the rest of the body. If we're looking at the craniums here, um, overall, there it homophoresiensis does seem to just be different and not uh, matching all of the uh, just not uh, matching closely with a microcephalic individual. Um, you know, there are some similarities here in, in brain size, but the overall morphology of the face does seem to match a little bit more closely with other hominins and not really just a microcephalic individual. You can see there's some shape differences that are missing between Homo floresiensis and this microcephalic person. Um, there have also been slightly older material that was discovered um, for Homo floresiensis at Matamenge, so 700,000 years ago, and that would tend to indicate that it's probably a real species because if we're finding it at multiple different points in time, um, that would indicate that it is a real species rather than just a single microcephalic individual. Um, of course, it is just hard to figure out what's going on without more fossils, and that's the main thing we need to see here. Um, but strangely, this is like one of the most contentious issues, whether it's a real species or um, or this pathological individual. And this is where I've seen the people be the rudest in print. I, I'm still perplexed. Like, why? It, it doesn't matter. Because um, if we look at how they're related, like, Homo floresiensis is probably just a late surviving Homo erectus, but even if it's not, like, they died out. They don't have any ancestors. It doesn't change the overall picture of human evolution either way, no matter what it is. So the re why people are so incensed about one way or the other, it 
really, really doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, we all have our opinions one, one way or another. So can you explain who is Homo floresiensis? When and where did this species live? And do you think it's real? <laughs>